I just want to make a really quick video showing you how I usually start post-processing most of my portraits. There's a few basic steps that I usually start with, and I'm going to show those to you right now. To start, let's grab our background layer. I'm going to hit Control J to duplicate it twice, select the duplicated layers, and put them in a group. Let's expand the group, grab that top duplicated layer, and I'm going to name this Vivid. You've probably seen a similar workflow in Photoshop tutorials. So I'm showing you how you can do it in Affinity Photo and how it's a little bit different than Photoshop. I'm gonna call this Vivid. Now I'm gonna press Control I on my keyboard to invert it. And then let's change the blending mode to Vivid Light. The Live Filters feature of Affinity Photo is great. It allows you to do a lot of non-destructive editing. So we're gonna apply a couple right now, starting with the high pass filter. I'm gonna take the radius and just drag it up until it softens the image and go high too, like over 20. I don't recommend going over 30. In most cases, usually 25 to 30 will work. And I'm gonna go with, yeah, 26.7. That looks good enough to start. So if we zoom in, you see it softened up the image a lot. So let's bring back some details. I'm gonna grab that layer again, come back down to live filters, and apply a Gaussian blur. Now let's bring up the radius to usually at least three, sometimes four, eh, 4.6. All right, let's take a look what we got here. I'm expand this and let's hide these live filters and go over what we just did. We applied a high pass filter, which softened the image, but then we wanted to bring back some details, All right? We wanted to clean up a lot of the skin blemishes. This doesn't get all of them, but it's a good start. But we want to bring back some details. So then I add the Gaussian blur. And when I turn that on, you see some details come back in the skin. And this is the before and after. All right, we're not quite done. This is affecting the whole photo. So if I zoom out here, all right, we see everything being impacted. And I don't want that. It's doing some weirdness down around here around the edges. So let's hide this, grab the original layer, grab the selection brush tool. And real quick, let's select the subject's face. All right, I think that's good enough for this example. Click refine, and just real quickly paint around the edges and release. And that helps smooth out the selection. Let's get the eyebrows just like this. All right, perfect. And I always like to feather it just a little bit, like two or three pixels, just a touch. Let's hit apply. And you see we have some additional selections on the inside here, that's not a big deal. What we can do is come over here and grab the freehand selection tool. Uh, make sure that's on add. I'm just gonna get everything that's inside the face area right now, just like that. Go back, select the group, and create a mask. I'm gonna hit Control D to deselect. Now, when we toggle the group on and off, you can see that it's only affecting the skin, not the hair, not the clothes, not the background. So we've isolated the smoothing and sharpening effect only to her skin. I'm not quite done here though, all right? So there's a couple things. If we come in here close and I toggle it on and off, you see it's impacting the eyes, it's making the eyes kind of dull, and it's adding a color tone to the teeth. Uh, I don't want that. So let's grab the mask. I'm gonna hit B on the keyboard to get the paintbrush. Make sure your color swatch over here is black and white. If it isn't, press the D key, and make sure the black is on top. If it isn't, if it looks like this, just press the X key until it looks like that. And with a soft brush, just real quick, paint out the mask on the eyes. And it brings the eyes back a little bit and let's paint out the teeth, get rid of that odd color tone on the teeth. Just doesn't work for me. This is looking pretty good, but there's one more step that I usually take. If we zoom in closer and we look at the forehead, the cheeks and the chin, and this is very common, you'll see that we have some extra highlights. Let's start by picking a very neutral color from her skin tone. To do that, select the background layer first, 
And let me demonstrate why. So if you had this top group layer selected and you hit the eyedropper and you came over here and you grabbed this color off her skin and you look up here at this little swatch, it doesn't match what we picked. Sometimes it's a bright orange, sometimes it's a bright green. And that's because of all the effects going on inside this layer. It's just, it, for some reason, Affinity Photo can't determine the pixel color that you see. It's seeing something different. So the best thing to do is to hide this, select the background, then grab the eyedropper and bring it over and select a, a pretty average skin color tone, something like this. I think that'll be fine. Let's zoom out with control zero. Come down over here. I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool right here. Let's make sure the fill color is the color we picked. If it's not, just click the little circle next to the eyedropper like this. And let's click and drag over the image. And there we go, no more highlights. I'm just kidding. We have a bit more work to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna blend this color in with the highlights on the underlying layer. So if you come up here to the top, you have this little icon for blend options. All right, if I click on that, and I grab this right here for the source layer ranges, and I just bring it down like this, you see it's trying to blend, but it's still like it's affecting the entire image. We want to focus not just on the skin, but on the highlights of her skin. So to do that, let's turn this off, grab the original layer. Let's come in here nice and close and go to select tonal range and select highlights. That's a pretty tight selection we need to select a bit more for this to be effective. Press Control B, which brings up the Grow Shrink Selection dialog, and bring it up to you have a little more of a selection going on. I think for me, 19 pixels works for this one. I'm gonna hit Apply. Then I'm gonna press Shift F6, which brings up the Feather Selection. And then I'm just going to feather it up just a bit and hit Apply. Now you see it's selecting a lot, all right? So there's a couple things we can do. Let's go to the freehand selection tool. I'm gonna click on subtract right here and put it in subtract mode. And let's get rid of a few things. I wanna get rid of this earring around the teeth, this bit around the hair, around the clothing and jewelry, zoom out just like this. All right. I don't want it around the eyes like this. Whatever's going on right here, I would fix this later as a very last step with the healing brush. So this little highlight, this happens. I'm not going to address it in this step. Uh, I have a little bit around the eye right here. I don't want that. I'm just going around just kind of getting rid of what I'm not too concerned about. Now, granted, you can dress this later because we're going to use this selection, as you probably guessed, to make a layer mask. So you can go in and paint this later. But to be completely honest, I think Affinity Photo's masking tools when it comes to the paintbrush and other features is kind of weak. Usually in Photoshop, I would very easily be able to paint these out or use the blur tool. But I think Affinity Photo still has a lot of work to do on masking. So before I create a mask, I'm just gonna to try to clean up the selection as much as I can. Just like this. All right, I think that's close enough for this example. Go up here, grab this, and create a mask. Right. Hit Control D to undo the selection. I'm gonna toggle it back on, and you should be able to see a very subtle effect on the highlights as I toggle it on and off. Let's turn on the other layer. So we can see the full effect. Grab that top layer. I'm gonna open the blend options again. And so what I usually do is I will bring a point down here, right to this corner. So I have a point here and a point here on opposing corners. And then what I might do, depending on how it looks, depending on the subject and the lighting, drop a point somewhere here in the middle and move it up or down. You see when I bring it down, I get more contrast, I get more highlights back. 
And if I bring it up and to the right, it softens out the highlights a bit more. But this will be entirely up to you how you want your post processing to look. I'll leave it right there for now. And this is commonly the first steps that I take when processing a headshot. So let me take these two right here and just group them so we can do a before and after. I personally like this workflow a lot. I feel it gives me a lot of non-destructive flexibility. I can always come back here later, open up these live filters and like bring down the sharpness, bring it way up. Okay, that's kind of ridiculous, but it's all non-destructive. All right, I can reduce the softening. I can bring it up even higher and bring it back down. I can adjust that color overlay. I can adjust its opacity. I can still adjust the blending options. This is all non-destructive. I hope these tips were useful. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you again next time.